What is up, amigos? Today we're talking about car platooning aerodynamics. That is when we're having more than one car in a row, and hopefully that slipstreaming effect will have positive benefits for one or two cars or more. Now, actually, in re reality, the results are very surprising. It's not what you'd expect. There are really two scenarios. One where the cars are closer than one car length, in which case the flow physics and the resulting aerodynamics is really unexpected. And then the other one where the cars are greater than one car length and then the results become a lot more what you'd expect. So let's talk about first the second case where the results are what we'd expect and then we'll go into the, the first case, which is really surprising anyway. So let's say we have a car upstream and we have the flow coming along and then we have a car downstream and these are separated by more than one car length. So what happens is it's pretty simple. We have the wake from one car forming around here and fortunately, this second car gets engulfed in this wake. That is a good thing in terms of pressure drag because what happens is this front face, which would usually, if you didn't have a car at the front, would be seeing all this very high energy flow hitting the front, decelerating, making a very high pressure up here. All of a sudden now we get a low velocity flow hitting here and the pressure is lower. That means that the pressure difference between the front face and the rear face is much lower, which means that the pressure drag, the drag, coefficient for pressure drops. That's really nice. And in as well, the lift coefficient usually uh, drops as well. Uh, that's mainly to do if you have positive lift, for example. And the results from this are confirmed by quite a lot of studies. For example, one called the effect of vehicle spacing on the aerodynamics of a representative car shape. That's a paper that goes through both of these scenarios. And you can find out more there if you like. So that's all well and good. We know that slipstreaming generally will do this. It'll reduce the drag of the downstream car and also will often increase and reduce the drag of the upstream car as well. That's because now we have this upstream car, this downstream car, pushing flow forward and creating a slightly higher pressure on the back here of this upstream car. So even though we have quite high pressure at the front still because we have very fast moving flow hitting it, now because we have high pressure up around here as well, the pressure difference between the front and rear faces are not as not as great. That means that the pressure drag is not as great either. So both cars really benefit there. This car here is, it doesn't benefit as much as the rear car. Usually, um, if you go one car length downstream or more, the benefits that this upstream car is getting is diminishing quite rapidly, whereas this downstream car is still going to be getting quite a bit of benefits, even down to like four or five car lengths downstream. So this downstream car is often um, in a lot better position. That's all well and good for this expected case. This unexpected case, let's go through what happens here. <laughs> and heads up, we don't know exactly why it happens. We just have um, figured out that it happens. So again, we get the flow coming off of this car. It's awake. And generally speaking, there'll be some flow coming down and hitting this front car. But because now we are within one car length, the drag of this downstream car actually increases for some reason. And again, we're not too sure why it's possibly just because the streamliners of the car just gets messed with. And that's because of this wake hitting it and it's the flow is really being directed down. So there's a lot of angularity to the flow. Um, but again, that's still not confirmed. And in terms of the drag coefficient increase, we're looking at 10, 20, even 30% increase for this car. The upstream car, on the other hand, its drag coefficient still is reducing. And that's because of this high pressure on this face still. So this, down, this upstream car is um, still performing as expected. The downstream car though, the drag is increasing. As for the lift, both of them are experiencing much lower lifts. And again, this downstream car, the lift is always being reduced even if you go past this one car length downstream. Whereas this upstream car, once you go past about half a car length, one car length downstream, the lift coefficient starts to trend back to uh, being normal and you're not getting much of a benefit there, at least in terms of cutting down that lift coefficient to make it more stable at high speeds. So that is how platooning, putting two cars in sequence or more, uh, affects their dynamics and there are two phases. There's below one car length and above one car length and the effects on the drag and lift coefficient. So that's the video, make sure to like and click the subscribe button and we'll see you on. Peace amigos.